We'll praise Jesus today, everyone. It is a blessing to know the Lord and to walk in the truth. I tried to make this message earlier today, but the video did not upload properly, so I thought I would make just a live video. But the message that I want to share that the Lord has put on my heart the last few days is in regards to the four soils. And if you want to read along with me, it's in Matthew chapter 13. And the part I want to read is actually the part where Jesus explains the parable. And as I read through it, you know, each one of us fall into one of these four categories. But the reason why it's convicting for me is because as I read through this, I put myself in the shoes of each of these people. And I want you to do the same thing. As Jesus is explaining this parable, look at your own life and think, do, do I match this ground or am I really the good soil? I'm starting in verse 18. Therefore, hear the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes then the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is he who receives the seed by the wayside. I could immediately say, well, obviously that's not me. Most likely that's not you. The seed of the truth that God has planted in me, <clears throat> I have not denied, I have not rejected, but the Holy Spirit has grown in me. So for many of us, we can just read on by that and it doesn't bring us conviction. But he who received the seed on the stony places, this is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures only for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, immediately he stumbles. A lot of people fall into this category, but I can say not me. I've went through persecution for my faith. I have went through many trials, many things have happened to me, and still I push through. But I read on. Jesus says in verse 22, Now he who received seed among the thorns is he who hears the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becomes unfruitful. That to me is very convicting because... In this world, it's really easy to fall into the lusts of the flesh. It's easy to be choked out by riches or by the deceitfulness of the lusts of your own flesh, chasing after sports, hobbies, just chasing after higher education. I'm not saying it's wrong to be educated, but all of the things in this world take your eyes off of Jesus and then you get choked out. And this is where most Christians will fail. Most Christians aren't immediately denying Jesus. They're not falling away just because of a little persecution or a trial. But they do get choked out because of riches or because of, you know, sports or things that they desire in their life more than God. And that also brings conviction to me. And I want to make sure that every single day I am fully in tune with the Holy Spirit, and fully surrendered to Him. Because if we're not, and if we make other things a priority over God, and we get lazy, then this world will certainly choke us out. Many people are choked out by addictions of the world. They're choked out by their cell phones, by the fear of the war that's going on, the fear of the things that are going to come on the world. They're just choked out by everything in the world. And instead of having their eyes fixed on their creator, on the Lord Jesus Christ and producing fruit, they become totally fruitless. It's sad to see people at the end of their life that once were believers, that once were Christians, but they no longer have anything to give. I don't want to be that Christian. All my life, whether I live long or short, 
I want it to be for the glory of God, always producing good fruit, always on fire for the living God, bearing good fruit all the time for his name. And in order to do that, we always have to put him first. And as we put him first, he fills up his love in our heart and his truth, his words. And that truth, those words, that love bubbles up in us until we're like a a cup overflowing with water, overflowing with life. And that's how we need to be. We need to be an encouragement to others, not a constant drain upon others. We need to every single day be filled with the glory of God, pleasing him, living for him, and enduring with him. So check your own life and ask, am I producing good fruit? Is my first thought of the day really for the Lord? Asking him, pleading with him, how can I produce good fruit for you? How can I deny myself correctly? How can I honor you with my life? How can I surrender everything that I have to you? My job, my money, my relationship with my spouse, my children, my hobbies, my education, my careers, my achievements, everything that I have. How can I lay that down, cast my crowns before my God and say, have your way with me to make me the man or the woman that you want me to be? Because that's the sort of people that enter the kingdom of God. That's the kind of people we want to be if we're going to be the sons and the daughters of the kingdom of heaven. I want to enter his kingdom. And I know that I am not above anything that I preach. I'm not excluded. All of us are being watched by our creator. And everything that we do is recorded and remembered. And Jesus will judge every single one of us according to our works. That is our words, our actions, our thoughts, the things that we said and did. Are we bearing good fruit? Are we good seed in good soil? Or or are we getting choked out by the world? I encourage you to get anything and everything out of your life that is choking you. Anything that pulls you down, that keeps you away from God, that keeps you from being fruitful. May the grace of Jesus be with you.